We can also use the equilibrium expression and the equilibrium constant in order to determine unknown equilibrium concentrations. This process will be different for every problem. You'll first have to write the equilibrium expression and figure out what type of algebra you have to do in order to determine the unknown concentrations. Let's start out with the simplest type of example. In this example, we have a reaction, 2NO plus O2 forming 2NO2. The equilibrium constant K sub C equals 6.9 times 10 to the fifth. If at equilibrium, we know the concentration of O2 is 0 0.001 molar and NO2 is 0 0.05 molar, can we figure out what the equilibrium concentration of the missing NO is? The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do in all of these problems is write the equilibrium expression. So K sub C will be equal to the concentration of our product NO2, and that'll be squared due to the two in the balanced equation, over the concentration of our reactants, NO squared times O2 squared. So if we can plug in concentrations, we could solve for any missing unknown one. In this case, we know our equilibrium constant Kc, we know the NO2 concentration, and we know the O2 concentration. So we should be able to rearrange to figure out what the missing NO concentration is. It's probably easiest to refer to our unknown, which is the NO concentration, in terms of X, where X will equal the concentration of nitrogen monoxide at equilibrium. So now we have to plug in everything we know and figure out what we don't know. Our K sub C is 6.9 times 10 to the fifth, which is a large value. A large value means that at equilibrium, we'll have mostly products. That's equal to our NO2 concentration, which is 0 0.05 molar squared over X squared, where X is our NO concentration, times O2 concentration, which we were given that at equilibrium, that's 0 0.001 molar. We can actually plug in the concentrations that were given to us because we were told that they were equilibrium concentrations. When they were non-equilibrium concentrations, we were calculating Q. But whenever we have our mass action expressions that equal the K sub C, those are gonna be equilibrium concentrations in there. So now we have to rearrange and we have to solve for X. So using algebra, we can rearrange and say that X squared will be equal to the concentration of our NO2, 0 0.05 squared, over Kc, 6.9 times 10 to the fifth, times our O2 concentration, 0 0.001 molar. Figuring out what x squared is equal to, x squared will be equal to 3.623 times 10 to the negative sixth, and then we're gonna to have to take the square root of both sides. So we'll take the square root of x squared to get x, and we'll take the square root of our number. So x will be equal to 1.90 times 10 to the negative third. And that'll be in units of molarity because that was our concentration of nitrogen monoxide at equilibrium. Next, let's try an example where we know the initial concentrations and not the equilibrium concentrations. So we have the reaction H2 plus I2 forming 2HI. We know the equilibrium constant Kc is 57. If one mole of H2 is allowed to react with one mole of I2 in a 10 liter vessel at 700 Kelvin, what are the concentrations of H2, I2, and HI at equilibrium? So this is different from the last example because in the last example, we were given the other equilibrium concentrations. Now we're only given initial concentrations. So we have to figure out initially what our H2 concentration and molarity is and what our I2 concentration and molarity is. So to figure out the concentration, we'll take the number of moles. So we have one mole of H2 and we'll divide by the volume in liters. It's in a 10 liter vessel. So that gives us an initial concentration of 0.1 molar for H2 and it'll be the exact same for I2 because we had one mole of I2 inside of a 10 liter vessel. 
So our concentration in molarity initially is 0.1 molar for both reactants. Now we know our reactants are going to react and they're going to form products, but we don't know how much the reactants are going to react. That's what we're going to have to figure out. So we're going to want to start by rewriting our reaction. H2 plus I2 will be in equilibrium with 2HI. We learned last semester that when a reaction occurs, the reactants will react based upon the stoichiometry in the balanced equation. So there's a one out in front of H2 and a one out in front of I2, and we have a two out in front of our HI. We can figure out what that unknown amount that the reactants react by, by creating something known as an ice table. This will help keep everything organized, especially in the beginning of these equilibrium problems, where we have I, C, E. The I term stands for initial, the C term stands for change, and the E term stands for equilibrium. We're interested in that last line, that equilibrium line. So initially, when our reaction first starts, we figured out that we had 0.1 molar of H2 we had 0.1 molar of I2. And we're imagining essentially initial being at time equals zero. So no products have formed yet. So our HI concentration we can say is zero initially. And then when the reaction happens, it's going to change by some amount. We don't know what that change is. So often we'll refer to our change line as our X, what we need to find. Our reactants are going to go down by some amount and our products which are being made are going to go up by some amount in this case. So when H2 reacts, it's going to go down based upon the stoichiometry in the balanced equation. So we can say it'll go down by minus X or minus one X. When I2 reacts, that also has a coefficient of one out front. So when the I2 concentration goes down by some amount, it'll go down the same amount as H2, but we can say it goes down by minus X. When we form our product, HI, that species has a two out in front of the balanced equation. So based upon the stoichiometry, it's gonna form two X when it starts being made. So we can say plus two X for our product because our product is being made so it has a positive change, whereas our reactants are reacting and going away so they have a negative change. The equilibrium line is going to be those two lines together, the initial line and the change line. So equilibrium will be the initial 0.1 molar for our H2 minus X, however much it reacts by. Same for I2, 0.1 molar minus X. And for our product HI, that'll be zero plus two X or just two X. Now that we have our equilibrium line, we can take this equilibrium line and these equilibrium concentrations, even though we don't know what X is yet, and we can plug them into our equilibrium expression. So for this reaction, our equilibrium expression would be Kc equals our product Hi squared over concentration of H2 times concentration of I2. We can only put equilibrium concentrations into that expression, but everything from this third equilibrium line can actually directly get substituted into that equation. So we can plug in Kc because we know that Kc is equal to 57. And then our HI concentration is going to be 2X. And we still want to square that term over our concentration of H2, which is 0.1 minus X times our concentration of I2, which is 0.1 minus X. Just a reminder that X is equal to the change in concentration of H2 and I2. So when we figure that out, X isn't our final answer. That's our change in concentration, how much our reactants will react by essentially. And we wanna figure out what all the species concentration actually is at equilibrium. So once we get to this point, there's a lot of different algebraic techniques that we can actually use to finish solving this. And some are easier than others. Because in this example, both of our two reactants had the same initial concentration. There are a few simplifying techniques that we can use. The first thing we can do is take our denominator and combine those two terms because they were identical. So we had 57 equals 2x squared over, we can write this as 
0.10 minus x squared. And that works because both our H2 and I2 had that same initial 0.1 molar concentration. So now we can combine those as both being squared. We can also pull that squared term out and say that we have 57 equal to 2x over 0 0.10 minus x. And we can say that this whole fraction is squared because our numerator and our denominator were both squared. Our goal is to figure out what x is first, so we're trying to isolate that. Now to get rid of that squared, we can take the square root of both sides of our equation. So we'll square root the 57 and we'll square root that whole term. And that will give us the square root of 57, which is 7.55 equal to, we'll just have 2x over 0.1 minus x in the denominator here. We want to move that 0.1 minus x out of the denominator so we can multiply both sides of the equation by it. That'll give us 7.55 times 0 0.10 minus x is equal to 2x. Now we're going to have to distribute our 7.55 through to each term on the left hand side. So that'll give us when we do 7.55 times 0 0.1, that'll be 0 0.755 minus 7.55x, and that's equal to 2x. We can add our 7.55x to the other side of the equation. So that'll give us 0.755 equals 9.55x. And then lastly, we can divide by 9.55 to get our x term. So x will come out to being 7.91 times 10 to the negative 2. And that value is our concentration change. So that's how much the concentration of H2 and I2 actually react. That's how much those two reactants are going to go down by. So if we want to figure out what our final concentrations are at equilibrium for all species, H2 concentration will equal the exact same thing as I2 concentration at equilibrium, and that will be our initial concentration, 0.1 molar, minus the change in that concentration, so minus x. So we're going to have 0.1 minus 7.91 times 10 to the negative 2. And that gives us our equilibrium concentration for those two reactants of 0 0.0209 molar. We can't have a concentration that was greater than 0.1 molar since that was our initial. Now to figure out our concentration of our product HI at equilibrium, HI was equal to, from our ice table, 2x. So we're going to do 2 times our x value we found. So 2 times 7.91 times 10 to the negative 2. Our HI concentration comes out to being 0.158 molar at equilibrium. Let's try another example similar to the last one. We have the reaction of CO plus H2O forming CO2 and H2. K sub C equals 4.24. Our initial concentration of CO and H2O are both equal to 0 0.150 molar. What are the concentrations of all species at equilibrium? So we're going to start out by writing our ice table. We have CO plus H2O forming our products CO2 and H2. We know our initial concentrations. We can figure out our change based upon the stoichiometry to get our equilibrium concentrations. So initially, we have 0 0.150 molar CO, and we have 0 0.150 molar H2O. We're imagining our reaction just starting initially, so we haven't made any products yet. Our CO2 and H2 will both be zero. When our carbon monoxide reacts, it's going to react based upon the stoichiometry, and everything in this balanced equation is one to one to one. So we know our reactants are going to go down by some amount, and our products are going to form by some amount. So our 
Cl will go down by minus x. Our H2O will react the same amount, it'll go down by minus x. Our CO2 will go up by plus x, and our H2 will go up by plus x. That's because everything has that coefficient of 1 out in front of the balanced equation. For our equilibrium line, we're going to have 0 0.150 minus x for our CO and our H2O. 0 0.150 minus x. Our CO2 at equilibrium will just be x, and our H2 at equilibrium will be x. So x equals a few things. It equals the amount that carbon monoxide and H2O react by, and it also equals the CO2 and H2 concentration at equilibrium. So next we're going to write our equilibrium expression. Our K sub C will be equal to concentration of CO2 times H2 over the concentration of CO times H2O. So it's always our products over our reactants. Everything's raised to the first power. And now we can actually take our equilibrium line, that final third line, and take those values and plug them into our equilibrium expression to solve for our concentrations. So plugging in our K sub C, we have 4.24 is equal to CO2, which was X, H2, which was X, over we have 0 0.150 minus x for the CO concentration at equilibrium and 0 0.150 minus x for the H2O concentration at equilibrium. Next, we can combine some terms here in order to solve this. So moving up here, we can say K sub C, which is 4.24, is equal to x times x in the numerator is x squared over we have 0 0.150 minus x, and we can say that whole term is squared because both of those were exactly the same. Once again, we started with our two reactants having the same initial concentration. So this is often a simplifying assumption you can make. Now we want to solve for x. We can rewrite this as x over 0 0.150 minus x. And we can say that that whole fraction is squared. We're going to take the square root of both sides. So square root of 4.24 equals square root of our whole fraction. That'll get rid of our squared term when we square root of squared. So square root of 4.24 is 2.06. And that will equal x over. 0 0.150 minus x. Continuing along, we want to get that 0 0.150 minus x out of the denominator, so we can multiply both sides by that. So we'll end up with 2.06 times 0 0.150 minus x is just equal to x. We'll distribute our 2.06 through to both terms, so that'll give us 2.06 times 0.15, which is 0 0.309, minus 2.06 times x, equal to x. We can add 2.06x to the other side of the equation, which will give us 0 0.309 is equal to 3.06x because we have 1x essentially on the right-hand side. And then we'll divide by 3.06 on both sides to get x, which is equal to 0.101. And x is a concentration change, so the units of x are molarity. Now, to figure out what all of our species are at equilibrium, we would go back to our ice table and think about what each of them are. The concentration of our two products, CO2, and H2 at equilibrium were the same. Those were both simply equal to X. So those concentrations will be 0 0.101 molar at equilibrium. For our reactants, the carbon monoxide concentration was the same as the H2O concentration, and those were both equal to the initial, which was 0 0.150 molar minus X. So we're going to have 0 0.150 
minus 0 0.101. So those concentrations will come out to being 0 0.049 molar at equilibrium. So really, those four different concentrations are our final answer, not that x value that we calculated necessary. You have, you have to go back to the equilibrium table and see what those concentrations were supposed to be at equilibrium. Sometimes x might be equal to an equilibrium concentration. Other times it might be two times that amount or some value minus that x value. So always go back to that E line and see what that equilibrium concentration will be.